So I've been thinking about the concept of a virtual desktop in the cloud, and I think that it can be a fascinating method of productivity. Basically, you have a desktop computer, so to speak, in the cloud that's centrally available. And on that desktop, you can have your web browser, your files, projects that you're working on staged, and then wherever you are, you just simply connect to it and continue your work. Whether you're at home, you're at your home office, or maybe you're on the road, you have this one central place and you can go there for all of your productivity needs. And it doesn't necessarily matter what you have on your laptop or anything like that. You have that one central location for your tasks. And in this video, I want to introduce that concept. I'm going to show you how to set that up on Linux, basically with a Linux cloud instance that you'll connect to to stage your work and then show you how to connect to that instance from your laptop. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here I am on my laptop. I am on the Linode Cloud Dashboard. Linode is a sponsor of my channel. They're a provider of cloud instances. I highly recommend them. They're a sponsor because I actually do really enjoy their service. I think they have a great service and I highly recommend that you check them out. That being said, the concepts that I'm going to show you when it comes to connecting to a remote desktop, that's not specific to Linode. So you could use your own cloud provider if it's not Linode, but I'm gonna show you the process on Linode and you can use the $20 credit that I have on my channel. There's a link on the screen right now and there's also a link in the show notes below that you can use to take advantage of that. But I'm gonna go ahead and create it in Linode and then show you the process, and then I'm going to show you the process of connecting to it to actually you know, start a web browser and maybe open some applications. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new instance. So I'll click on Create, and I'll create a Linode. And here we can choose a distribution. I'm going to go with Ubuntu 18.04. So that's an older version, so I need to show older images here. And then I'll have an option for Ubuntu 18.04, as you see right here on the screen. 18.04 is the latest long-term supported release of Ubuntu. So that's why I recommend it over 19.04, which is a little bit more bleeding edge. 19.04 has nine months of support, whereas Ubuntu has between three to five years, depending on what version you go with. So I think that something with longer support makes more sense here. So that's why I'm choosing 1804. So scrolling down, we can choose our region. So in my case, I'm going to choose, let's see, I'll go with New Jersey right here. I believe that's probably the closest one. There's other countries here too. So this is North America. And you could also go over here to Europe or Asia to choose whatever one is closest to you geographically. That's the one that you should go with. And scrolling down here, we can choose our plan. Now, Linode is not a free service. Their prices are very competitive. And again, I have a $20 credit on my channel that you can take advantage of. But the size of the instance will impact how much this will cost you. So for example, Here's a two gigabyte instance for $10 a month, but you can go all the way up here to 192 gigabytes and there's higher ones than that, but that's $960 a month and that's overkill for what we wanna do here. Normally, what I would recommend is to go with a nanode, which is one gigabyte. When I walk through creating servers on my channel, I always recommend this one because not only is it the cheapest one, but it's perfect for a personal server, like a web server, something like that. But in our case, we're setting up a cloud desktop though, so we're gonna need something with a little bit more horsepower. So one of the things to keep in mind here is whether or not you plan on running a web browser. So for example, if you're gonna be running Firefox, maybe you want at least two gigabytes here because you wanna make sure that your web browser that you have there in the cloud has enough room for all the tabs you plan on having open. And of course, if you're going to be running Google Chrome, you'll want to double that. I'm kidding, or am I? Um, anyway, I would say you could try a two gigabyte instance or a four gigabyte. I think four gigabyte would probably be a little bit more comfortable if you're running a web browser, but if you're not running a web browser, then two gigabytes should be fine. So I'm gonna choose this one right here in my case, the four gigabyte version. Scrolling down here, 
we want to give the Linode a descriptive label. So we want to basically give it a name. So I'm just going to call mine um, virtual desktop because I'm not clever today. That's the best name I can come up with. We could add tags, but I'm not going to do that here. Now we can generate a strong root password and I highly recommend you generate something very strong. In my case, I'm going to be deleting this instance as soon as I'm done because this is just a demo account here. So I recommend that you create a very long random password. So I'm going to create a short password, so don't do that. Um, you know how it says week right here. Uh, I just typed in a weak password. Again, it doesn't matter in my case because I'm going to be deleting that. But if it's something you plan on using, anything you create that's facing the public internet is going to be hammered on, so you do want to make sure you have a strong password there. Backups are optional. So if this is something you will find to be like a very important part of your workflow, you're probably going to want to make sure you have the backups there. That's going to automatically back up your Linode. So if that's something that you want, then go ahead and check that box. So I'm going to leave that unchecked though, because again, this is just a test instance. So I'll click create. And we can see that it is provisioning. So I'm going to go ahead and let that complete. Okay, so up here on the top right corner, we can see that the Linode is running. We can click on Launch Console right here. And that'll show us what exactly it's doing. So even though it's running, it's not fully started yet. So we'll just let this finish. And we see here that we are able to log in. So what I recommend that you do is actually use SSH. Now you could actually go through all the commands that I'm about to give you right here in this console, and that's totally fine. You don't need to use SSH, but I think it's recommended in this case because you know using a terminal emulator, you can actually copy and paste the commands in there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and open a terminal. Make that full screen, and then increase the font size a bit. And just wanted to make sure you guys can see that. So I'm going to SSH into the Linode that I just created. And to do that, I'm going to go back here to my dashboard where I have the virtual desktop I created. And I can click right here. If you could see that, I know it's small text, but it has the IP address, but I can click right here to copy that to the clipboard. And then I can go over here back to my terminal. I could type SSH root at, and then I could paste in the IP address. So that's the IP address I was given for this Linode. I'll press enter. And yes, this will come up when you connect for the very first time, that's normal. And then I'll type in the password that I created. And I am logged in. So what I recommend that you do at this point is just do a full update to make sure you have all the latest security updates. So what I'll do is apt update, and then I'll do and and apt dist upgrade. And the two ampersand symbols here means basically run this command. And if this command is successful, then run this one. If this command fails, then it won't run the second one. So this basically will update the repositories. And then this one will go ahead and um, basically just update all the packages. So I'll press enter. It should happen fairly quickly. I think the font size might be a little bit too big here. There we go. And we do have some updates. So we see that the kernel is being updated. That's what Linux is, Linux headers. And we have um, the Linux image, that's the kernel. So anytime that's updated, unless we have uh, auto patching enabled, we do have to reboot. And since Y is capital, by pressing enter, it's gonna automatically update that. There we go. I'll go ahead and let that finish. And if this message comes up, we can say yes. We haven't even started using this yet, so we don't have to worry about any services we're using being restarted. Anyway, I'll just press enter for yes right there. Okay, so we updated the packages on the system. So one thing we should probably do as well is go ahead and update the host name. Right now it just shows localhost. So if we had multiple servers 
and we were logged into the, each of them, we wouldn't know which is which because they would all have the same name, localhost. So let's go ahead and change that. So first of all, what I'm going to do is nano slash etc slash hostname. We can see that it says localhost, so I'm just going to go over here. I'm just going to erase all that, and I'm going to type virtual hyphen desktop, and then control O will save it, and then control X will get us out of the editor, and we also need to do the same thing in this file, nano slash etc slash hosts, enter, and we see localhost is here, and that's fine, but we need to add a new line here, and we're going to add 127.0.1.1. And then we're going to add whatever we named our instance, in my case, virtual hyphen desktop. So that way it recognizes that name as well. So I'll go ahead and save the file. And again, that's control O and then enter to save and then control X to exit out of the editor. Now, we're, since we did update it and change the host name, we're just going to reboot. So I'll type reboot and press enter. Now switching back over here to my dashboard. So at this point, we could check the progress of the reboot by clicking Launch Console. We can see that it's booting, and it might you might see something like it's, your Linode isn't running. That just means it's not far along enough in the process yet. So you just close it, wait a minute, and come back. But basically, we're just waiting for this Linode to be finished rebooting. And when we see the login prompt, then we'll know it's ready. And now we have the login, and we see it's kind of small here, but we see Virtual Desktop is the name. I'll close this, go back to the terminal, and then I could just simply hit the up arrow to SSH back into that instance. I'll type my super secret password here. And maybe if I could type it correctly, that would help a lot. There we go. And I have logged back into the instance. We could see that the virtual desktop name has been applied. If I type host name with no argument, we could also see and confirm that we did change the name. So now, Anything that refers to this machine via networking or what have you will see that name that we gave it. So that's awesome. So now that we've updated the system, we've changed the host name and we've rebooted it. Now there's some packages that we actually need to install. So what I'm going to do is just paste the commands in here. There will be a wiki article linked in the show notes below. So if you'd like to copy and paste the commands as well, you can get them from that page. So I'll go ahead and paste in the commands. I'll explain them, and then you can pause the screen if you need to write anything down or take notes. Now, the first thing we're going to do is add a new repository. This is actually a PPA, Personal Package Archive. So here's the actual command right here that I entered. And what that's going to do is add a repository for the Mate desktop version 1.22. And this is because Ubuntu 18.04 ships with an older version of Mate. And the newer version actually does have some additional changes and tweaks that are relevant to virtual desktop. It actually is virtual desktop aware, which is the reason why I'm recommending a newer version. But there's not a whole lot different here. So I'll press Enter to confirm that I do want to add that repository. Okay. And just to confirm that it's added, I'll do ls slash etsy apt sources.list.d. Just see what's inside there. And we can see that we do have the file that uh, comes with that repository. So that is added. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the Mate desktop environment. So I will paste that command in here. We're basically installing this package right here, Mate Desktop Environment, which is a meta package that will depend on other packages that are required for this desktop environment to operate. So I'll press Enter. And we can see that it's actually going to install 471 new packages here. So this is actually going to take a minute, but it's going to be the complete Mate Desktop Environment. So um, that's going to basically give us all the utilities that we might need to basically operate our desktops. For example, we even have P7-Zip. We, we have a text editor right here. We have fonts and some other things as well. I'm going to press Enter, accept these defaults. Give that a minute to install.
Okay, so we have the Mate desktop environment installed. So there's also an optional package that we can install to support the Mate desktop. And this is again optional, but it might improve compatibility. It's X2Go Mate bindings. And since that's the desktop environment we're going to be using, then it might be worth installing. So I'll go ahead and install it. Now press enter. All right, so now that's installed. And now there's two more things we need. We need the X2Go server on this server, and we also need the X2Go client on our local machine. So what I'm gonna do right now is walk you through the process of setting up X2Go server. And what I'm going to do is just show you the commands, but basically I'm getting the commands from this site right here. I am on the X2Go wiki, and I need to basically run through these commands. I'm going to actually start with this one right here where I'm going to copy this, and this is going to basically install the X2Go repository that we're going to need for the server. So I'll press enter, and then I'll press enter to go ahead and install it. So now that's gonna set up the repository for us. Okay, clear the screen. Now we should only need to install these packages right here, so I'll go ahead and paste that in. X2Go server, X2Go server, X session. I'll press enter. And it's going to install 101 newly installed packages here. That's because we need the libraries for the X server, which actually allows us to have a graphical user environment in the first place. So I'll press enter, give that a moment to install. So now that we have that installed, we need to install the client on our local laptop in order to be able to access our remote desktop. But before we do that, there's some additional steps we need to do here to make sure that we have everything that we need. Now, as you can see here, I am logged in as root. And it's a very bad idea to allow root to log in. We should log in as a different user. So let's create a user for ourselves first. So I'm going to do add user, and then we need a username, so I'll just do J for myself. And then it wants me to set a new password. Now again, you want a strong randomly generated password because this is a public facing interface this server will be hammered on. So if you have an easy password, I can almost promise you not some, some very not good things will happen here. So I'll go ahead and just type a password here for myself. And again, mine is simple only because this is a temporary instance and I'm just pressing enter through all of these prompts. We don't actually need to fill all this stuff out. Last confirmation here, I'll just press enter. And we have a user. Now, next we need to ensure that the user that we created is allowed to do administrative tasks. So to do that, we're gonna add that user to the sudo group. So to do that, we're gonna use user mod space minus A and then capital G. Then the group we wanna add the user to is sudo. And the user we want to add to that group is the one we just created. And now if we do groups and then that username, we confirm that that user is indeed a member of the sudo group. And to confirm that that works properly, we can do su space hyphen, and then the username we created to switch to that user. And now I am logged in as my actual user. You can see that right here. So I'll clear the screen here. And to confirm that sudo works, we can do sudo, then hyphen lowercase l, It'll probably ask you for the password, but I already ran through this once and it caches the password, but basically it's telling me that I am able to do pretty much everything. And to confirm that, a really easy test is do sudo ls because the ls command doesn't hurt anything and I'm able to do that, so I do know that it works. I could do control D to log out. And now I'm back to root. So next we want to ensure that we lock down SSH a bit so what I'm going to do is nano slash etsy ssh ssh d underscore config. And this is the configuration file for ssh. ssh is the method we're going to be using for connecting to this instance. So we do want to make sure that we take some precaution here to ensure that it is secure. Now one thing I want to mention, there's actually quite a bit we can do to secure the server and this is not an all-inclusive list. Basically what we're going to be doing 
is eliminating root login. So I'm going to scroll down and right here I see permit root login. I'm going to change that to no because we do not want to allow root to log in. We want to disable that and we really do need to have our user account created first. Otherwise, if we turn this off and we don't have another user on the system, then we have pretty much locked ourselves out. I also recommend, not right now, but in the future, as soon as you can, you look for password authentication, where it says right here, it's enabled by default, that you change that to no, don't do that yet. You need to basically set up public key encryption or authentication in order for you to be able to get into the server after you disable password authentication. But I highly recommend that you go ahead and do that. I have other videos on my channel that talk about security, but that's just a tip. But for right now, the most important thing is that we eliminate root login. And I did that by changing that to no. So I'll do control O and then enter and then control X to exit out. And what I want to do right now is open a new terminal window without closing the existing one because anytime we make changes to SSH, it's not going to eliminate our current connection, but we do wanna test it in another window before we log out of the original window to ensure that everything still works. So I'm gonna do system CTL restart SSH to restart the SSH server. That'll take or make all the changes take effect. Notice that my session didn't drop when I restarted SSH because current sessions will not be dropped, but that will only affect new sessions. So in a new window, I'm just gonna open a terminal and I'm gonna do SSH and then my name at, let me go ahead and increase this a bit. So basically I'm just gonna SSH into the server, but with my username instead of root, just to make sure it works. And I'll type in my password. And you can see that I actually am logged in. So I know that SSH is still working after I made those changes. So I can go ahead and close this terminal. And I'm back here at the original. So now that I know that SSH is working properly, I can go ahead and move on to the next step, which is where we're going to configure our local laptop or desktop. Okay, so to install the client on our local laptop, I'm gonna open up a new terminal session here. And there should only be one package I need to install. So on my end, I'll do sudo apt install x 2 go client. And this is for Ubuntu and Ubuntu based distributions. I'm running Pop! OS, which is based on Ubuntu. Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu. This should work in Debian and also Ubuntu as well. So this should work on pretty much most of the distributions. But if you're running something else like Fedora, for example, then you should only need to use a different package manager, but refer to the documentation for your distribution if you're not using something Ubuntu based as I am. So anyway, I'll press enter. And of course, in my case, X2Go client is already installed because this is something I actually use on a daily basis. So I'll clear the screen. Okay, now we should have a new app installed, X2Go client. So let's go ahead and search for that. And we have it right here. So I'll click on that. And if you don't have any sessions, it's going to ask you to create one. I went ahead and deleted all my sessions so that you would see the same thing on your end as I see on mine. So we're just going to go ahead and give it a name. I'll just call mine virtual desktop again, the same name as we called our instance, but the name doesn't really matter. Completely arbitrary, but we just need to give it a descriptive name so we know what it is. And for the host, we're going to paste in the IP address of our Linode or virtual instance. So I'll go ahead and paste that right there. And then we need to type in the username that we created for our system there. And we can leave the SSH port as 22. We didn't change that. For session type, we're gonna choose Mate because that's the desktop environment that we installed. For connection, you can go ahead and adjust this accordingly. The lower the bar, the higher the speed, but the lower the quality of the picture or image inside the session. And of course, the higher you increase this, the higher the quality, but then you might suffer some speed decrease. So I'm gonna go ahead and just increase it here to WAN. I think that's good enough. If it's a local instance on your local network, you can basically just crank this all the way up. For input and output, we can basically choose whatever resolution we want. We can make it full screen. We can use the entire display. I'm just gonna go ahead and make it 1600 by 900. 
which is smaller than 1920 by 1080, which is the resolution of my laptop. So I know that it'll fit in just fine. But again, you can go ahead and experiment with that any way you'd like. And then for shared folders, you can add a local folder to show up in the remote session, but I'm not going to go ahead and do that. But I'm just gonna click OK. And now we have the session here. So moment of truth, will it work? I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and then type in the password. Let's see what happens. And here we go, we have a Mate session. Now, um, when I first connected to this, I actually got an error telling me about some panel items that needed to be deleted. That's just a Mate bug, you don't have to worry about that. I went ahead and scrapped this and recreated it, which is why we don't actually see that error right now. But anyway, we do have an actual session here where I can run graphical applications. So something you might notice is that it actually kind of looks a little ugly here. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal. I may as well open one right in the virtual desktop itself. I'll maximize that, increase the font size a bit. And what we want to do is actually install some theme files. So we're going to do sudo apt install. We're going to do Ubuntu Mate icon themes and Ubuntu Mate themes. Press enter, type in my password, and I'll just let those install. So now we have those themes. I can go ahead and close the terminal. Now even with the theme files installed, I still had a little bit of a problem. As you can see, I have this hideous black border around my windows here. So to fix that, what you'll actually need to do, I'll go ahead and open the terminal back up again. And what you'll need to do is sudo apt install mate tweak, which I've already installed. But what that'll do is install some packages to give you some additional configuration options. And then once you've done that, you could come up here to the menu, and just simply search for tweak, open this up, and then you come down here to Windows, and then you change Marco Adaptive Compositor to No Compositor. And then once you do that, let me go ahead and close these windows here, you should notice that everything looks a lot better. We don't have that hideous black border around the screen anymore. And also we have an actual icon theme. And from here, you can go ahead and install additional applications. Now, one thing I do recommend that you do as well, now again, back here at the terminal, is we install Synaptic. So I'll do sudo apt install Synaptic. Type the password again, enter, Go ahead and let that install. Okay, shouldn't need that anymore. So we can come up here, search for Synaptic. That's our package manager. That's one of a few we could choose, but it's a good one. And we have different categories here. We can install whatever packages. Now, of course, we can use the terminal to do that. No problem there but I, we can go ahead and search for any packages we want. So Firefox, for example, if we want to search for or have a web browser installed, so I'll search for that. And then here it is, so I'll go ahead and check that box. And then let's go ahead and install. I'll check this box to automatically close the window when it's done. So I'll go ahead and close this. And this, and I had to log out and log in for some reason, so that's why this is showing up here. But basically now we have the Firefox web browser icon here in the internet section. So now I have a web browser in the cloud as well. I have a complete virtual desktop at my disposal. So there you go, guys. You should now have your very own 
virtual desktop that you can reach via the X2Go client. So you can have a central place to have some of your apps running, your utilities or whatever it is you're working on. So I hope that was helpful for you. And go ahead and stay tuned to my channel because I have new tutorials that I'm making right now and I can't wait to show those to you. So definitely stay tuned and you'll see those as soon as I have them uploaded. Thanks again. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.